Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 100 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every every single week so make sure you subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it yeah so yes i'm looking at we're like not centered but that's okay that's okay so yes we're not sitting on the couch again we're sitting in front of the christmas tree for the last time no not the last time we have one more week probably you think so yeah i just don't feel like moving everything <laughs> Lazy. It's a hectic week. So yes. it's Christmas week, and Christmas in the New Year's is always hectic. You got the holidays, especially when it's in the middle of the week, because you can't work on Christmas. No. And we're not working on Christmas the day after Christmas either, because we're going holiday shopping. We've got to, because the sales are crazy good. Right. So much easier, especially since you have older children right. that understand that you can reason with and say, hey, you can have one shirt today or you can have five shirts tomorrow. That's right. So let's just celebrate a different holiday. So yeah, so once again, we're gonna sit here and do keto on the bench probably one more week because we've been doing all the live streams and everything else. We don't wanna move the camera and we don't wanna lose the beautiful background of our subscriber Christmas tree. I know, I may never take that tree down. So yeah, so it's been an interesting week. What are you doing? Eating, I'm hungry. We just got home from church. I understand that, but did you bring bacon for everyone in the class? No, this is just for me because I made my own bacon this week. This is my own bacon. Well, it must be terrible because I would think you'd be bragging on it. No, it. this is the, the sampling. It's still on the smoker. I had to cut a piece off. You don't get to taste it until it's finished. So this is Does the benefit nice? of cooking is getting to taste it as it goes along. Listen would you to like this. to taste a piece of my bacon? I would like a piece of your bacon, sir. Now, I kind of just slice it while it's still on the grill, so it's probably a little bit thicker than um, it will be when we're done. Oh, man. Dude, do not change a thing. Not bad for a first attempt at bacon. <laughs> Where has this been all of our life? Is that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't already sitting down, I would need to sit down. So there is a five pound slab or four and a half pound slab of bacon finishing up on the smoker. But then and, what will you eat? And then I've got another one going in and then we're going to start another one. And wow. so we're going to film a video on how to do bacon. Again, just I've kind of learned... Christopher, like uh, slap a stick, sent me a recipe, and then I did a bunch of research and and tried different things. We're doing hot smoking on the bacon, but we're gonna do a video on how I've done it. But we're gonna kind of piece together instead of waiting two weeks, like starting it waiting two weeks. I've got one that's ready to go in the smoker, so we're gonna show you how we start a cure of one, and then we're gonna use a different slab. The one that's ready to go in the smoker show you this is what it looks like after 10 days and then we're going to smoke it and then so this way we can film the whole video in Are one day. Are you ever purchasing bacon again? I'm never purchasing bacon again. So I, long as I can get pork belly, I'm never purchasing bacon again. May there, may your, your refrigerator be full of pork belly. So, that's our wish for you. So that's what I've done this week is I've been making bacon. I feel like that's a good use of your time. And you know, what, what else did we do? Oh, I made a stand for our Berkey water filter. You did, and it's adorable. So if you're new to our channel, we're, we've really been trying to shift a lot more to drinking water because I'm a soda fiend. <sighs> Rachel's a seltzer water fiend. I am. And we're trying to drink just plain water as much as possible. Not that there's anything wrong with drinking seltzer water or something like that, but you know. Not on the amount that we do. Carbonation, bloat, all of that. And we're trying to get rid of the plastic water bottles. Cause down here in Florida, we're always leaving them in our car. And it gets hot. And it gets hot. It picks up that plastic taste. You're dealing with phytoestrogens in the plastic. So we, we bought this Berkey water filter. The problem is, it's kind of tall. It doesn't fit underneath the cabinets, which means now it had to sit on our bar. 
And so I built a nice stand. I'm gonna put a picture of the stand here. I kind of just drew it together. What it really needs is a good sanding down and painted, but we were in a rush. So we just kind of did it. And then at some point I'll go back and I'll sand it down and give it another coat of paint. Are you gonna give plans or make plans no, available I'm not making in plans. case anybody else wants to make it? Do you have dimensions for this thing? No. I just literally kind of threw it together. Like, no, didn't do any plans, didn't follow any plans. I'm like, yeah, this looks good. So you're just, uh, this picture that you're sharing is just humble brag. Kind of. Okay. So, <laughs> so we did that. We did Christmas shopping, we sort did. of. And there's... What, sort of? We did Christmas shopping. We did Christmas shopping, but... We still have more Christmas shopping to go this week because like we said, we're gonna go the day after Christmas because that's when the best sales in the mall are on. So with get our kids, shoes. get Rachel some stuff. I really Want did some bras. try to surprise Rachel with some things this year. Now I did, we got, I got you the tickets for Universal. Which I feel like you could have held on to that information until Christmas. No. Well, I didn't buy them yet. Maybe, I, maybe the surprise will be I don't buy them. What kind of Christmas present is that? But she did say she wants her office rebuilt, or she wants me to turn our our spare bedroom into an office for her. So I'm going to be doing is that. Surprise, it done? No, it's not done yet. Oh, okay. I haven't had time to do that yet. Okay. We're but live streaming every day. You've been making bacon with your time. I've been making, that's more important than doing your office. I actually think that that would be true. So, but... I bought her a couple of things and she keeps opening the Amazon packages. Well, because I'm thinking it's something for church or or something. No, for... you're snooping. I, I promise I'm not snooping. Well, you ruined all your surprises because all the things that were supposed to be surprises, you've opened. And you wore them too. Well, I haven't worn my pants. I saw some pants came. You wore the hoodie. You wore your t-shirt. A couple other things I think you wore. Well, I guess you're just going to have to buy some more stuff. I'm running out of time. <laughs> yeah. Now we've waited to the point I'm where... I'm finishing this bacon. I've got one piece left. Amazon doesn't even have time to get stuff to us. Today's the last day. Yeah. Got to order it today. And some of the stuff, it's already saying, like, mm -hmm. you can't get it until afterward. Yep. That's a sad day. <laughs> that is so good. Perfect amount of saltiness on that bacon. It's good and salty. It's really good. I didn't wash it or anything. <laughs> that sounds dirty. So, so yeah, so we got Christmas. And I, what I wanted to talk about today is what, what are we going to have for Christmas? So we're doing steaks. Steaks, because you can, you're, you're an adult. You can eat whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's kind of funny. People are like, well, am I allowed to have anything other than turkey and ham? Yes. Yes, yeah. you can. You get to decide. So I'm curious what all of you guys are doing for Christmas dinner. We're doing steaks. We're doing ribeyes. And it's kind of not the way I would normally do it. So I went to Whole Foods and they had these beautiful ribeyes. The guy's like, you can cut it to any thickness you want. And we need eight ribeyes. I want it this thick. Well, they're not. They're only like that thick. Dang it. Now they had them that thick, but we do have a budget. And each steak was like two pounds well nobody in our house is eating a two pound steak you're not gonna eat a two pound steak i could try you could try so i had him he cut them all to like between three quarters to an inch so every steak is a, is a pound all right so we got good. eight pounds of ribeye what i probably would have done was bought like three of them and then had them like two and a half three inches and then just sliced off of that but I know everybody in our house wants their own steak. We do. So it, it, I knew it, like if it was just Rachel and I, or maybe Rachel and I and Anthony and Caleb or something like that, I would buy like one big giant, like four inch steak. He had some there that were like three, four inches. Wow. Cook the one steak and then slice it off into pieces. Mm -hmm. But instead we just did eight steaks. Each one is about three quarters to an inch thick. And a lot of people are gonna be like, well, how are you gonna cook that so well with it being so thin, making sure it's medium or medium rare. Sous vide. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sous vide them. So I'm gonna set everything up because Rachel's mom is gonna cook breakfast on the Blackstone griddle. Yeah, because sometimes Christmas morning and opening up the presents takes so long that by the time you're done, you are ready to just like eat. Right. So having breakfast, breakfast food, it cooks up pretty fast. Yeah. It's nice, right? So we're gonna do breakfast food and then I'm gonna sous vide the steaks 
and then we're just gonna finish them off on the grill. This way, it doesn't matter how thin they are, they're all going to be medium rare. Yeah. And I'm taking no requests for the steaks. No, everybody You want it well rare. done? Tough, you're getting it medium rare. Tough. You want it medium? Tough, you're getting it medium rare. Doesn't that sound like Merry Christmas? That's how everybody's getting their Tough. steaks. Tough, <laughs> Merry Christmas. You get like what you get and you don't get upset. Well, I'm gonna sous vide them to medium rare and then okay. I'm gonna sear them and if somebody wants it more, they can take it back out to the grill and stuff. Okay. That's a good way to go. I guess. <laughs> and me, I don't want steak. I'm having cowboy burgers. Look at this weirdo. I like burgers. We talked about it on our live stream. How many people like burgers? I love burgers. So I'm having- I love burgers. Grass-fed hamburger that has jalapenos and cheddar cheese- Delicious. And bacon all mixed into the burger. It doesn't beat steak. No, it does. It absolutely beats steak. No. Bears I, beat Battlestar Galactica. No. And I may even break out a bun for it. Mm, my anaconda don't want bun. Oh, no. Sorry. I messed that up. My anaconda don't want none unless you got smart buns, hon. Yeah, so we're doing that. And then we're going to have a few sides, but we're only doing any kind of, only doing keto desserts. I'm going to make like a chocolate pie, that kind of thing. Well, and I like the discussion that my mom had. We were actually at the grocery store and she was thinking about like, you know, my nephews that are younger kids and stuff like that. And even the even Caleb and Anthony, you know, they're not keto all the time. So they're thinking maybe we should get some desserts for them. Right. And so she said, the only thing is this will probably trigger me. I will probably have a hard time saying no to these desserts if the desserts are in the house. And so I looked at her and I was like, you know what? Your grandkids really love you. We really love you. If you think that this is gonna cause you a problem on Christmas, don't buy it. And that's the benefit of hosting Christmas yourself because you it. get to control the menu. If mom and dad want them to have some other desserts, if Caleb and Anthony want to have themselves some other desserts, get them on your own time. That's right. We don't want to create a problem. That's right. Right? So just don't get them. Now, if you are planning on going off plan, I don't like calling it cheat because like it's cheat's a, plan. a bad connotation. Yeah. I like saying if you go off plan, if you're saying like I've made the plan that on Christmas, I'm not gonna eat keto, that's perfectly fine. Totally because like Rachel said, you've made it a plan and then plan to go right back on the next day. Exactly. And you will be perfectly fine. Now what I want don't want anybody to do is Go into Christmas. We'll see what happens. See what happens. And then when you have a slip up or you have something that you weren't planning on having, start beating yourself up and then say, now I've got to go on a 72 hour fast. That is the opposite of helpful. <laughs> Make the plan to on December 26th, you're going to go back in and say like, I'm just going to start eating normal. Within a day, you should be back in keto. But if you don't have a plan and you say, well, I'm just going to see what happens, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You're going to see that other food and whether you decide to eat it or not, you're going to be preoccupied with food, which is not what the holidays are all about. Right. You are not going to be able to be Christmas present with all of that food and that and that question going on right there. You don't want to be negotiating what you're going to be doing in the moment. Right. And then if let's say you decide to indulge, but then you hadn't planned for it, you're gonna feel guilty immediately. You're gonna right. beat yourself up the rest of the day. And then once again, you're no longer Christmas present. You are thinking about, man, I stink. I didn't, don't like what I did. And, th and that's just, it's it ruins Christmas. Right. So just go into Christmas with a plan, either to stay keto or to not go keto, and have a plan of when you're going to back go back on to keto exactly. if you're going off keto for Christmas, whether it be you know on the 26th or on the 27th, or you're going to wait all the way to New Year's, whatever it is. I would suggest if you are planning to go off for Christmas and then maybe off for New Year's, go off for Christmas, get back on on December 26th, spend the week keto, and then go back, you know, if you're planning on going back off for say New Year's Eve or something like that, yeah. I would not suggest doing seven days of non-keto. No. It's going to make it that much harder for so many reasons. Number one, you're just gonna completely kick yourself out of ketosis. Now you're gonna go through the keto flu and all that all over again. Plus, 
you're gonna give yourself the taste of seven straight days of eating, you know, carbohydrates and stuff. And there's a chance you may not go back on it. Whereas exactly. if you go off for a day, go back on, and then go off for a day again in a week, you know, you're going to be have a much better chance of having some success. Well, and don't swing the other way and say, okay, I'm going to go off for Christmas, get back on the December 26th and not eat anything until New Year's Eve. Right. You know what I mean? And be yeah, like, don't do that either. I'm going to fast for five days after that. Like, right. don't do that either. That is not necessary. Right. So just have a plan. And while I'm thinking about, can you reach down there and grab that? Yes. In January, we talked about, we are going to be doing a fast for God. And our fast is going to be doing that. We're going to do keto chow, keto bricks, but you don't have to do that. But a lot of people have said they want to join us. Uh -huh. And so what we're doing is we just had the 12 days of, give, of keto giveaway. We are finishing up tomorrow, Christmas Eve, the 12 days of give of serving. serving. And so we are going to, on our live stream, if you're seeing this on Monday, December 23rd, on our live stream on December 24th at 9 a.m. is it's the early. live stream because we're doing a 9 a.m. live stream, then we're going to see Star, Star Wars. Wars. We are going to do a giveaway. And in order to enter into this giveaway, you need to go over and like and comment on the December 19th. 19th uh, 12 days of serving live stream. I'm going to leave a link for that right here over Rachel's head. So if you go over and leave a comment on that, you have until tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. or whenever we get to the giveaway in the live stream, probably about 9.30. 9.04. To leave that comment and you will be entered in to win this Cuisinart immersion stick blender, blender. Immersion blender. A classic flavor bundle. I don't even know what's in here. A bunch of different of the sample flavors, the originals, and one of our 2KK blender bottles. Because you have to have a blender bottle to drink it out of. Right, so enter into that because that might be a good way to get yourself started or restarted come January. Or it may be a nice little gift to give somebody else who's yeah. going to start onboarding maybe, on keto challenge. Maybe you know somebody who's on keto or getting ready to start keto coming into the new year and you want to bless them in the right way. This is a great way. An immersion blender, great for making your own mayonnaise, great for making your keto chow, keto great for coffee. bulletproof coffees. So many good you know, options and things you can do with an immersion blender on keto. Nice thing of keto chow, and since this one doesn't have the blender bottle in it, we're gonna put our blender bottle in. We just don't have one sitting here at the table. We got you. But we got you. So make sure you go ahead, if you haven't already entered into that, make sure you go enter into that giveaway. And just to, once again, I know we, we I don't wanna beat a dead horse, but we- Too we, late. We do wanna say that don't feel obligated to do a keto chow for 30 days no. with us in January. Absolutely What not. we would encourage you to do is something. Is something. Just Start do something. the new year off with something, whether it be keto chow for 30 days, or it be carnivore for 30 days, or it be, um, you can do no artificial sweeteners for 30 days. How about no, no snacking? snacking? No snacking. How so about you anything. do um, total carb instead of net carb? Right. You could do that for they 30 days. They say it takes three weeks to break a habit. So what better way to start the new year? Now again, we're doing it as a fast for God and we're giving up just food because we like food. Yeah, we love right? food. We like food. So I love chewing. We're going to, we have to eat something. So we're going to basically eat like, this is all you can have. Keto chow and keto bricks. Right. Can't have anything else. No keto snacks. No, none of the good stuff. And we probably... Not that keto chow and keto bricks aren't good. But. No, but we would probably give up everything altogether, except for we don't want to lose the momentum yeah. that we've had with the reverse dieting. Right. Because the whole point was, don't make it where you take your calories down to like right. nothing. So, yeah, so we want to encourage you to start the new year off right. And we'll mention one more time on next week's Kid on the Couch since it's still in this year, 2019. Yeah. But just start thinking about what would you consider doing if you don't want to do the keto chow or keto break or anything like that? Because we want to have a challenge and be like just, everybody can participate. Well, and just hit the ground running yep. because a resolution without putting some feet to it just becomes a wish, right. right? And there's so many times, at least for me, that I've made a resolution to do something, but without a plan in place and actively just starting it, 
it goes by the wayside. And the cool thing is, is there's over a thousand people in our Facebook family group to help motivate you through that 30 days. And whatever you are doing, people are going to be cheering you on. Yeah. I had one more thing and then we can get into our comment. Oh, I wanted to talk about traditions. What are Christmas traditions? Okay. But I saw something in um, Christy Davis's uh, Keto Village Facebook group. We and I thought her. it would be really cool to see what you guys thought. I mean, some people I've noticed, they put up things like, hey, I bought this keto treat. Not really for me. Yes. Uh, so... We were thinking about maybe putting a post in there where if you've gotten a keto treat that you just don't like, don't want, maybe putting a thing almost like a little, like, uh, I don't know, a seller or a trader kind of thing. Like, Great. hey, I got this perfect keto. I don't really like it. Does anybody want to trade me for it? Or does anybody want, would anybody be willing, be willing to buy? Like, I have three extra tubs and yeah. maybe, you know, discount a little bit. But this way, somebody else could get it and you're not stuck with it. Well, maybe you're a bar person, but you're like, watch Autumn Keto and you're not a meat stick person. Right. And you could say, I'll trade you a bar for a meat stick. Yeah. So let us know if that is something you would interest and we'll try to figure out a way to put it into our Facebook group. But it'd just be a nice way if you've got something that you bought that maybe you just don't like. Or something you, you give love and you want to share. Yeah. So, so let us know down in the comments. And the last thing before we get into our like comments and uh, subscriber of the week is we want to talk about traditions so what are your christmas traditions or your hanukkah traditions yeah so the tradition in our house is uh we're just going to kind of re relax together we go to church on christmas eve this year our church is actually doing it in the park which is really cool only yeah. one service instead of like four like am know. i allowed to do a happy dance <laughs> because usually what happens is um, you've got Christmas Eve services and there could be like four of those and it can be a lot to try to find volunteers to yeah. staff all those classrooms for for Christmas Eve services. So the fact that we can all be together in one like community service, I'm I'm so excited. Yeah, we're super excited about that. So so the church is actually doing Christmas Eve church services in the park in Parkland. It's, we're super excited. They're expecting like 3,000 people. Be bounce houses. Bounce houses and food and oh, it's gonna be awesome. Hot chocolate. Ooh. So can't wait for that. And then we're gonna come home and we just kind of relax together as a family. On Christmas Eve and then Christmas morning is when we get up, have breakfast and open all of our presents over at my mom's house. Yep, we go over there, we open presents. We, uh, we first we read um, the Bible story. Always from Luke yep. chapter two. Um, yeah, that's something that we've been doing ever since I can remember. Since, I mean, my grandparents did it before my mom started doing it and my dad started doing it when I was a little kid. So just a tradition in our family to do that. But what do you do? Are you a Christmas Eve person? Like, does your family open up Christmas presents on Christmas Eve? Are you Christmas morning? Some people wait until the next day. Some people are usually uh, using Christmas day as a travel day. Right. And you don't get connected with your family until the 26th or later. Let us know in the comments down below how do you celebrate the holidays? Yeah, because after we open presents, then we're gonna we're gonna kind of relax for a little bit. We'll start the steaks and all that stuff. Then we'll eat, and then we all just kind of collapse. The kids play cards with Uncle Steven. We watch some TV, and we go home. Rachel and I will then get up super early in the morning Crack on, dawn. to go to Walmart to get all of the 50% off bundles. And we buy all of our razors, all of our like body washes, shampoos, Everything for the entire year for our family gets bought the day after Christmas. We are planning not to stink yes. in 2020. That is our commitment to you. Yeah. And then we're going to, the kids and I are going to work. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we're going to go back to the mall to do some day after Christmas shopping. So that is what our traditions are. Get some sneakers. Let us know what your traditions are. Yeah. You want to get into the comments because we do Please. need to get through this quick because we have a live stream in 20 minutes. Oh my gracious. So let's do it. Let's get through this. We're going to have to do this with no mistakes. So well, let's see impossible. if we can do this. So we're going to start off with our subscriber of the week. So if you're new to our channel, we like to go into our Facebook family group. There's a link down below mm -hmm. and we ask you... Put up your stories, some before and after pictures, struggles, 
just things you've gone through, successes, non-scale victories that you've had, and we like to share them with people because your story will impact somebody else. It absolutely will. Okay, so the first one is actually a non-scale victory, and it's from Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. And Stephanie wrote, uh, I have a new non-scale victory and pretty darn proud and fresh motivation to stay on track with Christmas. I am down to one pair of jeans and one pair of warm-ups. My jeans are a size 14. While I went and bought two pairs of 12s earlier, I think the last time I wore a 12 was in sixth grade. You're so awesome. about 42 years. Wow. She's like beyond excited and in shock. The best part is I couldn't even shop on the side of the store that I'm always shamed to shop on. I got to hang out on the other half of the store. I love that. I remember very vividly this, the happy dance that I did the moment I was able to make that move from the women's section to like the ladies section. Or the plus size section. Exactly. The one where there wasn't a W after yeah. it. It was it was kind of like, that's an adult toddler size. Can we have that happy dance? Oh my gosh. It was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was loud. It was loud. It was, it, security was called. But man, it, that's awesome. Yeah. That is super exciting. Congratulations. Congratulations. Stephanie. Okay, so this next subscriber of the week is going to be Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Lisa wrote, eight years ago, out of desperation, I had lap band surgery. Some people say that it's cheating, but I look at it as a tool. I still had yeah. to learn to eat healthy. I tried juicing, low carb. They worked for a while, but nothing helped me and made me feel so healthy as the keto lifestyle. I'm a cook for a living, and from oh. time to time, I mess up and I go to the dark side. But I jump right back on the keto wagon, and keto is my lifestyle for my lifetime. I'm super proud of you. And don't let anybody say something negative about like a surgery that you've had no. before. It is a tool. And you know, I've known a lot of people who've had lap band surgeries, even gastric bypass surgeries. And unfortunately, the one problem that a lot of people, which obviously you did not struggle with, is they didn't deal they don't deal with the eating habits. So yeah. it is a tool, but you still have to find the underlying problems. Otherwise what happens is you just put it all that weight back on. So exactly. Congratulations. You found that you use that tool and have incorporated with, you know, doing keto. And I have a friend of mine that actually just recently had a lap band surgery. And a lot of the lap band doctors are now recommending people like pretty much do keto. He's eating like almost no carbohydrates as part of the recovery from his lap band surgery. And he decided, you know what? I like this. I'm just staying this way. That is awesome. So congratulations. I wanted to show you your before and after pictures. Take a look at Lisa's pictures. There's her before. Okay. Are you ready? Look at her after. Oh my gracious. What a hottie awesome? patati Mrs. Claus. Congratulations. Gorgeous. Okay, so let's get into the comments. So we've got our computer right here. So hopefully like this is a little bit better than me looking over on the side and stuff. Okay. So you look at the camera, I'll read the comments. All right, okay? let's do this. So Alan said, hey, I love y'all. Be sure to take a few minutes to enjoy the season of grace when Jesus came to be one of us. Absolutely. Yes. So He's as hectic as we are. Reason for the season. We are making sure we take some time for ourselves, which is why we are going on Tuesday morning Stop. to see Star Wars. Just family time. And then we get to go to church. I love that. Me too. So Cheryl wrote. Hey, Cheryl. If this was someone's first time here, I think they might not understand. Rachel, you were more crazy than usual. I'm I'm so sorry, <laughs> but it's like you, you've got normal Rachel and then the holidays. I get so excited and you've been letting me talk to people through chat for 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 24 yes. days. This is awesome. We're I'm, actually going to miss the live streams. It's going to be nice that we're not like we don't have to get home and make sure like to be on the live well, stream. Well, that we can do but, more videos. And and we get back into videos, but we are going to miss it cuz it's just been fun to interact with you guys. It has been. Okay, so um to potty I think that's, it's, it's a Tupati. Tupati. Hello, Tupati. Said, Joe, explain how Rachel was dressed for church had me laughing so hard. <sighs> there is no explanation. And the kids are always looking for like, what is she going to do this week? Somebody came up to us today and asked like, how many Christmas clothes do you have? Do you just have totes of Christmas clothes? And Rachel's like, yeah. yeah. Stephanie wrote. Hey, Stephanie. LOL, JW was walking by and was like, OMG, what is she wearing today? It's so bad. It's so bad. Uh, my sister wrote, 
Hey, my sister. Since I am off this week, it, um, it's time for my annual Star Wars marathon for me. Only I'm not being paid $1,000 to do so. There's a company that is paying somebody $1,000 to watch all the Star Wars movies. I want How do that I get job. that job? Oh my goodness. I want that job. I'm getting that job. I'll even give back 300 of it if I can skip episodes one, two, and three. <laughs> I will actually sit through one, two, and three, Terry, if you can just let them know that I'm like, I'm ready to take that position. Joe wrote. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe, can you put a link to your dryer balls on Amazon again? Balls. I wanted to use your link and I was going to buy some. So I just literally Googled on Amazon, but I will put a link down below for the dry balls that we got. And I think they were like $9. We ended up buying 18 of them. So when you're like, I want laundry balls, did the return on that search come back with anything terrible? Um, well, I, when I typed in balls, there were a couple of things that weren't. like. Because I've done some Google searches thinking in my mind, this is absolutely G-rated. <laughs> right. And then you put it in there and you're like, I did not think this through. And now I through. can't unsee what I've just seen. <laughs> but yeah, so I will leave a link for the ones we got down below. And we really are enjoying them. I, it does seem I have to, to make... hide them from Tabitha, though, because yeah, she, she thinks, thinks they're a toy. That it's a toy. But it's nice. They are. They do seem to make the clothes dry faster, they right? Do. And uh, it smelled good. We haven't been using any laundry detergent. So kudos to you. I'm proud well, of we, you. We, Give me a high five for well, we're, no. Well, we're using laundry, laundry detergent. Laundry I meant no fabric, fabric softener. softener. Or dryer sheets. So I'm proud of you. Thank you. Uh, Steve wrote. Hey, Steve. If you, want, if you don't want to wait two weeks for bacon, you can do an experiment and see if curing for one week versus two yields noticeable differences. Trust me, I'm not trying to harm you. I only cure mine for six to seven days. Being able to slice into your bacon in whatever thickness you want is fantastic. Yeah. I've only sliced one piece off. But that was a good piece. It was funny. So this week in the preschool room, they were learning, I will be patient. But now you've brought bacon into our life. Can't barely be patient with bacon. Very difficult to be patient if yeah. I know that there's bacon very close to being done in this house. Yeah, so we let it cure for nine days and it came out really good. Is that patient enough? And then, so the other batch will actually be 10 days. We're gonna do that one tomorrow along with a video. Hopefully we can find the time to just shoot the, the, the video through it and then get that released. So Ron Ron wrote. Hey Ron Ron. Hello my favorite two crazy ketos. I've been missing the live shows because I'm working late but I still try to catch the reruns. I love you guys. The Christmas holiday has been keto challenging for me. I keep diving off plan. I'm trying to keep it together, though. Watching you guys always helps. Aw, well, thank you. Well, we're here, and I don't want you to stress out about the holidays. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon, and no matter when you're ready to just, like, get back on plan, we'll be here. Yeah, don't worry about the holidays too much. I mean, even look around YouTube. You see a lot of the keto YouTubers who are going off plan for a day or two days here and there. Don't worry about it. Just make the plan to get right back on, and you'll be perfectly fine. So don't stress out about it. No. Uh, Bambi wrote, hey, Bambi. the best way to get anyone interested in anything is by being a good example. I think you two are a good example for keto success, Christianity, and a Christian marriage. Oh my gracious. What a honor. Thank you <laughs> well, for saying that. Well, thank you very that. much, Bambi. We do appreciate that. Now, don't think we're better than anybody else because we struggle no, with Lord. lots of things. Hey, we go up and down in weight. We may not go off of keto, but we definitely go off of eating too many calories, plenty of times. I'm guilty of that, we're both guilty of that. So we're not perfect, we try. And again, we don't want anybody to think that we look down on anybody who goes off keto for no. the holidays. We don't do it because we don't trust ourselves. We're the, we're the worst. I know, if I were to go off of plan and eat a bunch of french fries, I will be eating french fries for the next month. And I just, I don't trust myself, so the way I deal with not trusting myself is don't give myself permission even for one meal. It wouldn't just be falling off the wagon for me. It would be like the Oregon Trail. Like right. you've died of dysentery. Like I that's wish the I ending. could do that. I wish I had that ability of so many of you guys to be able to go off plan for a meal and then get right back on to the next one. I just, I don't trust that I would be able to do it. And I like the way I feel. So I just do it this way. But there's nothing wrong with going off plan. This is a lifestyle. It's not a diet. Exactly. 
Renee wrote. Hey, Renee. Hey, fam. I actually have two questions. Um, and I actually only wrote one of them in here. Okay. Um, the other one was about Keto Chow. I can tell you what it was. Uh, she said, I've heard that liverwurst mentioned a couple of times in the past couple of days, and I've really been craving it. My mom used to make us liverwurst sandwiches as a kid. What are some ways that you guys use it? I heard somebody mention cooking it, which I've never tried. I have never tried cooking liverwurst. No. Rachel never wanted liverwurst, and I fed her liverwurst with cream cheese on a chaffle, and she loved it. I thought it was delicious, and definitely props for, I want to say it was Katrina mm -hmm. that said, use the cream cheese. Cream cheese was the game changer for me. Liverwurst is awesome, and it is an awesome way that you can get all of the benefits of eating liver without just getting some liver and smelling up the house and cooking just like liver and onions. Liverwurst is great. And now when you, now with, with the invention of the chaffles and all of the different yeah, ways you again. can have like bread or even go make our folio cheese wrap recipe, which is, I'll leave a link for that over here where you don't have to buy the folios, you can make them yourself mm -hmm. and just get that. It's a great option for getting your liver in. So go ahead and try it. Get your liver in. Now the other thing she did ask about, which I didn't put it in here, was she said, can you use coffee as the water for keto chow? I like how she's thinking. Yeah, so still use your butter, still use your heavy cream, but then when you fill it all the way up, instead of using water, can you use coffee? Which absolutely, I would suggest it with the vanilla, mocha. the chocolate, the mocha, chocolate toffee. I would probably steer away from like orange. Cookies and cream would Ooh, be not good. Orange. So yeah, any think about anything that would go good with coffee. Salted caramel. Maybe Something that you would make a drink spice. out of. Yeah. So think about all the different flavored coffees. Any one of those would go good with coffee. Very good idea. So uh Tamara wrote Hey Tamara. I agree about the naps. Remember we were talking about she you nap and how long do you nap? Because Anthony can take a five minute nap and be no. happy. That is just going to take the edge off of ticking me off. Gail wrote, Hi, Gail. I never take naps now, but before keto, I had to nap every day. That's funny because, yeah. I mean, you're not tired all the time like you were. We used to nap constantly after eating. Like, we would go and we would sit down to eat. We would watch. We always watch TV when we eat, just Rachel and I. And as soon as we were done eating, the plate would go up behind us. Out. Out cold for like an hour. And then we would wake up and... Back to normal. Well, it was a food coma. Yeah, it was just a food coma. Keto Cindy, keeping it real, over 50, said, I hey, hate Cindy. short naps too. I want to sleep until I wake. Yes. Yeah, it's that's called bedtime. That's why, like, at night, like, if I'm, like, still find myself up at 3 or 4 a.m., which usually is a result of between working and eating too late. If I eat late on keto, I have so much energy, I'm not ready to go to bed. It's funny. You're going to be like, you know how people decide, I can't drink this cup of coffee after 6 o'clock? For me, it's food. It's a, like, don't a eat fat after 6 food. If I eat a high-fat food late at night, I've got so much energy, I'm not going to bed. And then what will happen is at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning, I'll be like, I need to go to bed bed and then I'll look at them like but I got to be up in an hour at this point we're just going 48 hours with no let's sleep let's just stay up Janice wrote hey Janice hey guys I'm off work today I did something I never do I took a nap after waking up at 6 a.m after some light housework and laundry well anyway I got up the first thing I did was cut on to YouTube or put on YouTube and I just saw you finished alive and the first thing you all talked about was naps oh my goodness that's so funny <laughs> well if it's a treat like that that's almost like a bath or just relaxing yep treating yourself to something so Stephanie wrote hey Stephanie I want to thank a special new friend from this group. This is out of our Facebook group because there weren't a lot of comments in last week's Keto Aww. on the Couch. Uh, and she said, I have met an amazing lady that is on a totally different keto journey from what I am on. We spent well over an hour in private messages last night talking about our journeys, our experiences, and what got us to the point in life that we are both at. Ma'am, I want you to know what a blessing you are, and I pray uh, that you share more of your journey, not just with me, but with others. You are truly an amazing person if no one knows Renee Noonan you must get to know her I love this 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 is why we created our Facebook family group to have people to encourage each other and to see that you guys are not just making comments on the Facebook you're group, making friends 
friends. You're making friends, taking it over to private messages. And we've made a lot of friends with all of you guys, you know, messaging you guys. I mean, and this, I mean, this is awesome to see two people getting together, sharing their journeys. And then what she talked about and what I was reading some of the responses was exactly that. They're doing two totally, completely different types of keto. And it's okay. And nobody is judging. And that's what we want. We want a judgment-free zone in our Two Crazy Keto family group where whether you're doing strict keto, dirty keto, lazy keto, you're doing carnivore, whether you're doing eggs, whether you're only doing keto chow, whatever it is, that there is no judgment because the bottom line is you're improving your health. And it doesn't matter how you're doing it so long as you're improving your health and there's a place for you and it's with us yes okay so this is our last one and this is actually also from our facebook group and it's from debbie hey debbie debbie wrote so i'm a keto newbie and i would welcome some advice from this knowledgeable bunch Mm -hmm. sorry for this long post i'm a chick about to turn 55 and i've dieted most of my life since the age of five with the accompanying uh, disordered eating and weight gain Highest weight was 320 about 15 years ago, and my current weight is 230. I quit the dieting cycle four years ago, worked on my disordered relationship with food, and I lost some weight, but I've still struggled with uh, awful inflammation and feeling creaky. I've stopped eating sugar, bread, and starchy vegetables the day after Thanksgiving, which has helped a great deal, but I know I need more. My problem is even with my extensive dieting background, the daily working out of my macros is proving to be complicated for me even with the abs too many moving parts Uh, i love in the youtube videos how joe helps rachel with her food and her macros my sweet and supportive husband helps me in the mathy areas of life but he is a thin dude who is not doing keto with me my question how can i simply do keto yet also enjoy the best health benefits so far i'm feeling better and i am less swelly but i know i'm not doing it optimally so thanks so much i feel like the next thing to start tackling is your oils yeah the fats what like getting rid of like any canola oil in your fat, getting rid of like those inflammatory oils, I think is gonna make a big difference. Yeah, if you're looking to really cut down the inflammation, the oils are going to help. But as far as keto, how do you make keto? You're still new to this. It's only been three weeks, right? It's Christmas, you know, Thanksgiving was only three weeks ago. Wow. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. What we tell them, we're gonna be doing our new videos, like redoing of like how to get started on keto. But what we suggest, spend the first two to three weeks, don't worry about calories, don't worry about macros, just get rid of the carbs like you've done. Get rid of the sugars, the breads, all that. Keep your net carbs under 20. If you want to even get more, like keep them even lower. What I would always tell people, if you want, even if you're gonna do net carbs, net carbs under 20, no more than total 40 total carbs. Don't yep. do more than 40 total carbs, whether you're doing net carbs or not. Don't go over 40 total carbs. Just do that for a while. Get through Christmas, get through things, and then you can start working on some other things. Something else you might want to consider is taking a look at Carrie Brown's Happy Healthy Keto Program. Yes. Which if you purchase it, I'll leave a link down in the description. If you purchase that, um, before December 31st, it's only $79, it's 13 weeks, and she's gonna give you meal plans with recipes, with grocery shopping lists, with everything, plus a full Facebook group and everything, and Zoom meetings and everything to encourage you for 13 weeks. That's pretty awesome. That is another great way, if you don't wanna have to worry about macros or something like that, you might wanna consider doing that. And again, I'll leave a link down below. A lot of people ask us, do you guys have a plan? Do you have a meal? It's like, why? Why should we do it if there's somebody that's already so brilliant and doing it and we know her recipes are going to be awesome right and she's super fun to talk to right so i would definitely if you and if you don't want to do that just to finish it up just keep it simple start out simple try to stay away from all of the keto treats and all that other stuff unless you absolutely need something make a simple fat bomb we've got a couple of great fat bomb recipes like our cookie dough Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff but Stay away from the, like a lot of the, like, ex, you know, complicated recipes. Keep it simple. Eggs, ground beef, bacon, you know, chicken, that kind of stuff. And that'll definitely help you on the right path. Exciting. Well, that is our Keto on the Couch for this week. Please do us a favor. Leave your questions and comments down below uh, for next week's Keto on the Couch. Next week will be the last one for this year. 
mean? And we will be getting back into the swing of doing videos, at least five regular videos, not live streams every single week. I'm excited. Uh, also, make sure you go join our Facebook family group. So. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. And until next week, bye! bye.